Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to go through several fundamental counting principle questions. Uh, there are a few other ways you could do this, like you could use permutations or factorial notation, which we'll get to in some of the later examples. Uh, my goal in this video is just to show you guys how to set up the questions. Uh, I'm just going to skip the plugging into a calculator step just so we can go through more problems in less time, so I'm not wasting your time with this video. Okay. So um, I've set up uh, pairs of questions mostly throughout this where they're similar questions, but a slight changing in the wording changes the what the question is asking. And understanding those small differences uh, is actually kind of a big part of understanding counting questions, uh, fundamental counting principle, permutations, combinations. All of these questions can change quite significantly with just small changes in the wording. So for instance, we've got two versions of this Mr. Armstrong wardrobe question. Uh, so I'm getting ready for student parent teacher interviews and I want to look my best to impress. I've got four shirts, three pants and 10 different ties and wearing a tie is optional. How many outfits can I make versus same question, a uh, different numbers, but he has decided he will wear a tie. Okay. So this is, this is the change. He has decided he will wear a tie versus wearing a tie is optional. And that actually changes one part of the calculation quite significantly. In both cases, what we can do is we can do shirt. Uh, I've got four shirts, pants. I've got three pants, or sorry, pants. I have three pants. Now for the tie, because wearing a tie is optional, it's not just 10 choices for the tie, because I could also not wear a tie. So there's 10 different tie choices, plus there's an 11th choice of not wearing a tie at all. And then you just multiply four by three by 11. Okay, this one here, same idea, uh, different numbers. So in this case, we've got, uh, sorry, let's label this. Shirts, we have six. Pants, we have two. And ties, he has decided he will wear a tie, means it is just 10 options. Okay, I must wear a tie. Therefore, there's no option not to wear a tie. And I didn't include it in the question, but presumably I should be wearing a shirt and pants to meet with parents and students. Right, so that's not optional either. Okay, um, then you just plug those into your calculator. Okay, this one I kind of like. This is uh, like I call this the Subway sandwich question. Okay, so um, Shimoy is ordering a foot long veggie delight, which means no meat sandwich from Subway, and blah blah blah, whole bunch of options. So this is sort of the same idea, right? So for bread, there are four choices. There are four choices for bread. Now for cheese. For cheese, you don't have to have cheese, right? We talked about this in class, right? Cheese is optional. Uh, uh, oops, whoops, sorry, did not need me to move that. So that is optional, but bread is not optional. If you don't get bread, you don't have a foot long sandwich, but cheese, you don't have to have cheese. You can choose not to have cheese. So there's three choices of cheese plus one choice for not having cheese. Okay, now the veggies actually is, there's there's 10 veggies here in this list, um, but there's actually not just 10 choices and there's not just 11 choices, right? If you choose to have lettuce, that doesn't mean that you can't have tomatoes. You could have lettuce and tomatoes and spinach. In fact, you could have all 10 if you want, or you could have none, or you could have five, or you could have three, right? This is actually, there's actually 10 different choices here right? There is lettuce, there's tomato, there's spinach, there's cucumbers, there's peppers, there's olives, there's onions, there's pickles, there's banana peppers, and there's jalapenos. And every single one of those, you've got a choice. Do you want lettuce or do you not want lettuce? Do you want tomato or do you not want tomato? Do you want spinach or do you not want spinach, etc. And so basically for, um, not wedge, for veg, there's 10 veggies and each of those is a binary choice. Binary just means two options. You either yes or no to 10 different options. So it's two to the 10th, or, I mean, you could, I guess, theoretically write out 10 different lines and do times two, times two, times two, times two, times two, times two. I'd rather just use the 10th power, okay? And that's how you answer the Subway sandwich question. Bread, not optional, just the number of choices. Cheese is optional, so you actually need to plus one for not having cheese. And then the veg is actually a separate choice for every single vegetable, whether you want it or not. Okay, let's look at these dice questions. So these are very similar questions. It's just asking for um, a slightly different thing. 
So in Dungeons & Dragons, uh, players often roll multiple dice at once and add up the total result. Uh, to make reading the rules more simple, the D&D rules shorten this to X, D, Y, where X is the number of dice to roll and Y is the number of faces on each die. Example, 2D6 means roll two uh, regular dice, six out of dice, and add them up. Okay, cool. How many different sums are possible? So how many different sums are possible versus how many different dice rolls are possible? Those are asking two completely different things. So how many different sums are possible means like what possible numbers could you get? So a 3d4, like the smallest, the smallest sum is getting one on each dice. So each die you get one. So one plus one plus one is three. The largest sum, in this case, it's a 3d4. So a four is the maximum result you can get on a four sided die. And you can you're rolling three of them. So the highest result you can get is 12. So from three to 12 is uh, 10 numbers, right? So basically uh, three you want to include. So um, uh, one and two you don't want to include, right? You basically want to skip one and two, but otherwise you want all the numbers up to 12. So you want all the numbers up to 12 except for the first two, which is why it's 12 minus two. Okay, that's how we get that 10 numbers. And so 10 is the number of possible sums. This one, how many different dice rolls are possible is literally saying, well, in the first die, uh, let's say dice uh, die number one, number two, number three. So 3D 20 means on the first die, there are 20 possible results. On the second die, there are 20 possible results. On the third die, there are 20 possible results. So this is 20 times 20 times 20, or just 20 cubed. Okay. So those questions are asking similar, but different things. Okay. Here's, here's another question where they're similar, but different. Okay. Um, Sadie's planning a summer road trip, starting in Saskatoon, stopping in High River and ending in Kelowna. Sadie has five different routes between, uh, so between Saskatoon and High River, there's one, two, three, four, five options. And between High River and Kelowna, there are six options. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's literally, uh, and then how many possible routes are there for Sadie's road trip in one direction? Uh, so S to H, there are five options. And then H to K, there are six options. So you just multiply those. Uh, this one's very similar, um, except the difference from this one is um, we're going and back again, stopping uh, the same place, st stopping in in both directions. Sure. To keep it interesting, Noah wants to take a different route back on both legs of the trip. Okay, so um, we're basically going like this. So we're going from Regina to uh, Medicine Hat to Vancouver and then back to Medicine Hat and back to Regina. So on the way there, uh, from Medicine Hat to, uh, sorry, from Regina to Medicine Hat, there are two root options. And from Medicine Hat to Vancouver, there are three options, which means on the way back, well, we don't wanna take the route that we took on the way there. So Medicine Hat to Vancouver, right? There's three options. One of the options we've used up, so there's two options left uh, between Regina and Medicine Hat, there are two options. We've used one of them up, so there's only one option on the way back. So the final answer is two times three times two times one. Basically, you subtract one from each option on the way back. Okay. Um, let's do this one here. <clears throat> so how many ways can a sum of eight, a total of eight pips, be rolled on two different dice? Now, if it doesn't tell you the dice, you can just assume that it's a regular six-sided die. And uh, one way to do it is to do like a table. It doesn't take too long to do this. And you can then actually just fill in all of your different possible sums, right? So um, I will, I'll start filling this out. Um, but for the sake of time, I think I'll sort of start skipping because we're going to notice some pattern pretty quickly. So one plus one is two. One plus two is three. Two plus one is three. Three plus one is four. Two plus two is, oops, two plus two is four and one plus three is four, right? And one plus four is five, 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 five. You'll notice that actually the sums along these diagonals are always the same because if you increase one dice by one and you reduce the other dice by one, the sum stays the same. And so this is the row we care about. How many eights are possible? There are five of them. 
the other way is you could just figure out that uh, the smallest way you could get eight is uh, six, six plus. So six is the biggest thing you can get on one dice. So you got six, two, uh, five, three. Uh, you can get double fours and then you can reverse those three, five and two, six which is five options. So you could just list them all as well. Either way is fine. Um, listing them all is faster, obviously, but if you need the whole six by six grid, no shame in it. It doesn't take long. Uh, it's a quick solution to do. Okay, I've got four more questions I wanna do. Oh, if I can get my program to cooperate. There we go. Okay, now these two are similar questions. Um, the difference between these is if repetition is allowed and if repetition is not allowed. Okay, and then we just need to be careful to make sure we're using our logic and reasoning. Um, actually, this zero here is going to make the second one slightly different as well, because um, it's asking for a four-digit number. You can't start a four-digit number with zero. Okay, so that's going to slightly change it as well. Okay, so using the digits one, two, three, five, six, and seven, how many four-digit numbers smaller than 6,500 can be formed if repetition is allowed? Well, we actually need to split this into two cases, because it matters if you start with a six or you start with not a six. Uh, oh, sorry, um, we're doing this backwards. If you start with a six, you've got one option versus, oh, sorry, smaller than seven, smaller than 6,500. Smaller than 6,500, there are uh, four options. Uh, so this is not six. And the reason is because um, if we want smaller than 6,500, if the first digit is six, well, then the second digit can't be it can't be five, six, or seven. Okay, and repetition is allowed. So then the other three options, one, two, and three are allowed. And then the last digits, it can be anything. Uh, we've got six digits total. So there's six options, six options, and sorry, that's it, uh, four lines. So one times three times six times six, if you start with a six. If you start with not a six, then your uh, next three digits, they can be anything. Right? It's less than six. It's less than six thousand already. So it doesn't matter if it's five thousand seven hundred, right? Five thousand whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, there are any digits at all are fine after the first one, and then you need to add those two cases together. Okay. This one uh, repetition is not allowed is going to change things a little bit, and also the zero is going to change things a little bit. So we want smaller than sixty five hundred. Okay. So again, we're going to do two cases. We're going to do case one starting with six. So we're starting with six and then case two is starting with not six. Okay. So we want smaller than 6,500. So there's one choice for six. Okay. Repetition is not allowed. So let's think. So like we've already used up our six um, and we want smaller than um, we want smaller than 6,500. So we can't even have a five here because like theoretically, um, yes, we can't have a five there at all. So there are three options for this, right? We've used up one of these. I don't know. It doesn't matter which one, which means we've used up two digits already. And then the last two digits, it doesn't matter, but there's only four choices left. And then we've used up three digits. So then there's three digits left. So one times three times four times three for that case. Now, if we start with not six, you can't have a zero either. So you can't have a zero. You can't have a six. Okay, so if we can't have zero, can't have six, then there's three options for the first digit. And then the next ones don't matter, but the, we've already used a digit. So there's five options left, then four options, then three options. And then you add those two together. So one times three times four times three plus three times five times four times three. Okay, cool. Now this one's the first one we might actually want to do with factorial notation because this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight letters. Now we want to be very careful and make sure that we only have one of each. So I am actually a big proponent of actually taking the time uh, to actually write out every single letter and do a count, even if you're pretty sure there's only one of each, because it's very, very easy mistake to make. I still remember in grade 12, when I was in grade 12, I made this mistake of not noticing a double letter in a word. It's very, very easy not to, uh, to miss a double letter. So just take the time, make sure that there's no double letters. Since there's no double letters, you could do the fundamental counting principle. So we're rearranging all the letters, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines. You've got eight choices for the first letter, seven choices for the second letter, then six choices, five choices, four choices, three choices, two choice, one choice. Or it's just eight factorial. This one, same thing, except 
we're told that the first letter must be H and the last letter must be E. Okay, and there are uh, six, in this case, there's six letters total. Which means if you know your factorial notation, you know that there's just four factorial possibilities in the middle, which is fine. Or you could literally just write your four lines and say four choices, three choices, two choice, one choice. Okay, so, I mean, I skipped the calculator step, but that is how you can do a whole mix of different fundamental counting principle problems.